guys, today we're going to be doing a review slash rolling in the field test of the Buck Knives slash Ron Hood collaboration slash like tops possibly uh, Buck Thug ultimately. It's, it's called a Buck Thug. And like I said, please guys, before we roll into this review slash field test, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more awesome reviews like this one. I was saying today we're going to be talking about this really awesome knife and I've been using it for quite a few or and I've been using it for a few months now as you guys have probably seen by the handful of videos that I've been using this knife in and it's really been and I'm going to be rolling in test footage of course as I talk and so you guys can kind of get an idea of the how effective this thing is and it's been really impressively effective I have to say I've really really enjoyed uh, using this knife and I think what I really find most enjoyable about this knife in particular is the fact that it's kind of like a multi-tool it really I think does the one tool option correctly and the fact that with this knife you get a lot of versatility you get a lot of chopping ability through this up uh, Front kind of almost kukri styled belly and then you can also choke back and choke up on the knife and move back onto the more bottom or beginning of this knife and you have a very effective hold and a lot of control to do things like feather sticking as you guys will see or have seen um, and to do finer crafts and like I said I really enjoy just how well you can choke up right up to that very cutting edge and really focus down on your cutting if you need to do close work and then of course you just have general purpose cutting done in this kind of mid-range area and then I think what this knife gets right and what a lot of knives don't get right or bigger knives don't get right is that it has a really thin but yet at the same time really robust tip. This knife is of course made of 5160 spring steel so it has a very hard to break tip and I have done some tip prying tests on this knife just to make sure because this knife does have a pretty thin I think you guys can see there, pretty thin tip. So it is not the world's thickest tip, but what I really enjoy about that, as you guys have seen with some of these things like making a hole, I've even made a netting needle, and so you guys can reference some other videos in the past where I've done more work with this knife, such as making netting, netting needles, and it's held up just fine, and like I said, that really acute tip allows, so long as you're comfortable with like choking up on the blade, and you're not afraid of getting your hand on the blade, which, like I said, done smartly, you can totally get your hand up on the blade. And so it allows you to really choke up onto the blade actually, but you have a fine and really precise tip for actually going in there and prying and doing fine tasks. And I think that's probably the, the thing that surprised me most about this knife is I was expecting it to be kind of like most big knives, kind of big and clunky, but due to the size of handle and the way it's set up ergonomically it does allow you to hold it in multiple ways to use the back half or back three quarters of the blade really effectively and then if you decide to choke up this has a very fine tip for doing really fine and detailed work and I'm continually impressed at the kind of detailed work I can pull off with this really big knife and so that has really impressed me uh, heavily with this knife and I can tell that Ron Hood definitely had his hand or a big hand in making the design of this knife the way it is because it is a very effective uh, multi-tool and I guess or and I've also shown you guys some uh, draw knife ability. This is of course not the world's best draw knife, but because of the way this uh, kind of curves in here, you can really hold up here on the tip. And I kind of like to do it more like this, but you can get back if you need more uh, leverage or you want to use more of the blade, you can really get back on the uh, handle here and pull it like this. But you can also get a little bit closer if you want to do more detailed uh, draw knifing with this knife and it's very easy to use this knife as a draw knife and so that adds you know really there's about four capabilities to this knife just in that whole range and so once again the designer or ron hood was really really thinking out this knife quite well when he made it
Now, as far as the 5160 uh, spring steel goes, I don't actually have a whole lot of use with 5160. This is only my second knife that has it, but I'm still continually impressed by 5160. It is a superb steel, and I think it was the perfect choice for this knife because this knife actually is not particularly thick, so it really needs to have a steel that helps allow it to be thin but yet still strong and I think 5160 was a really good choice for that and you guys will see I'm going to roll in some chopping footage I don't know if that was a real or false tobacco plant I don't really know because I'm not that experienced with them but what I do know about that plant is that plant grows a lot here in, in central Alaska and it also is a lot like bamboo where it has a really stiff outer uh, shell to it essentially like the stalk but it also has a hollow interior to it and so you guys could see there that this knife it has a thickness to be pounded like you guys could see the batoning and so it's not super weak but at the same time it's also thin enough to do moderate chopping this is not a machete this is not something designed to go through just lots of grafts but what I do like is it can go through moderately sized brush really well. Things like saplings, smaller trees, things like bamboo and that type of like plant, whatever is like false or real tobacco, whatever. Um, that type of plant that's thicker and hard and something that a machete would struggle through, this thing has the power. And once again, due to this curvature, if you hit the uh, brush that you're trying to cut right here in the belly, it just plows right through it. And you guys could even see in the chopping, if you hit on the belly, it just plows right through it. And for the most part, I've really been impressed with the chopping of this knife because it's a quite lightweight knife. Uh, especially for its size. This is a 13 inch overall length knife and so for its size it's really really lightweight and I found that due to the design though it still is well it's certainly when you're taking on large pieces of wood you can feel that it's a very lightweight knife and it's not really strong enough to go through the big stuff uh, but at the same time if you're working with you know smaller size you know like wrist thick trees or you know thumb thick brush uh, it definitely excels in that area and like I said it's lightweight so you're not expending that much energy cutting but at the same time due to the design it is very effective and still blows through brush of that size. Like I said, edge retention and design are really, I think, spot on for this knife. As far as the handle and ergonomics go, at first I thought this little nub right here would be really uncomfortable, but I actually for the most part like it, and occasionally when your thumb or whenever your finger, not thumb, but whenever your middle finger or finger does ride on it, it's, it's noticeable, but it's not painful. But for the most part I do like it because it helps kind of divide your three ladder fingers from your two top finger so like your pointer and your thumb and then your three ladder fingers for most work this is kind of like the general purpose area and then for me I find it to be just a little bit cramped but generally when I usually chop with this knife I usually do three fingers you guys can see this one just kind of rests out here on the lanyard that's kind of why I have the lanyard back here is so that it gives something for my pinky to hold on to while I chop and in that position I found it for the most part to be comfortable over prolonged or when you're chopping like I said through really big things. I have found this to be just a little bit painful and I have found the handle, if you aren't holding on to it properly, the handle can be a little slick as well but uh, for the most part the texturing is good and I don't really have much complaint. Uh, this is micarta scaled so I like the way they've left the micarta. This is really one of my favorite ways to have micarta and that is that it's left pretty stock like this is pretty much how just rough micarta is and so it's not super polished like uh, bark river likes to do because i found with bark river that's a really nice and pretty feature of the knife but it's not very practical like this you can feel the fibers of the uh, canvas still there but yet it's still not like terrible but you can just it's not polished either you can still feel it and you can still grip it up pretty good once again with ergonomics to the uh, jimping i found to really not be that 
bad. I don't use jimping generally on knives. I've actually pretty much just trained it out of myself to use it. So like when I'm holding it here, I'm not even using the jimping. Like the jimping for me would be really awkward on this knife because if you hold it here, it feels like the thumb's just a little bit too far out. And then here it's way too cramped to use the jimping. So I think the jimping, at least right here, is more of like a marketing ploy. Just kind of, you know, make the knife look cool in a picture but uh, it doesn't really serve any practical feature. As far as it goes, if you were to try and use the jimping, it has moderate lockup, but just like most jimping, it would create a hot spot over time. Other than that, there is one other thing I've done to this knife and uh, requires just a flathead screwdriver or a flathead of anything, so you don't necessarily have to use a screwdriver. I'm using my Surge here just because it is a screwdriver or has one on it, but what I did was I opened up these handles really early on when I got the knife and uh, I realized that there was some pretty good size they've skeletonized out a fair hole it's not a huge hole in here uh, in the tang and of course this is a full tang knife but they've skeletonized out a fair sized hole and so what I did was and I'm going to uh, remove this real fast the back one off but I certainly could <clears throat> but just to kind of show you guys as a reference what I did was uh, because they had a fair sized hole as you guys can see here what I actually did was I took like a 5 16 inch ferro rod and put it in the center I'll move it close so you guys can see but what I did was I took a 5 16 inch ferro rod and put it in the center and then I just wrapped some paracord that's around like I think three or four feet it's not a whole lot but just a little bit of paracord around there and uh, just filled that area up primarily I did the stuff with the paracord so that the uh, ferro rod wouldn't rattle there we go <laughs> so that the paracord wouldn't rattle but or sorry that the ferro rod wouldn't rattle yet paracord rattling yeah but ultimately i just did so the ferro rod really wouldn't rattle and of course some nice extra paracord never hurts so anyways i just wanted to note that quick survival feature that um it definitely is capable of holding a little bit in its handles and i primarily chose to do this with this knife because i noticed this knife had a flathead screw flathead screws on it and so you could actually in a real survival situation um, actually take these handles off if you needed to for whatever survival situation you were in and like i said i was like might as well throw a ferro rod and some paracord in there because i know it has a paracord lanyard but a few little things never hurt as far as striking a ferro rod i don't have any easy access on me except rod goes this knife will throw sparks off the spine you do have to get rid of the coating um, like you just have to keep striking the ferro rod and that will wear away at the coating on the very edge here but it does have a 90 degree sharp spine and this thing once again it's a carbon steel so it throws some pretty fierce sparks off of it so it does a pretty good job at throwing ferro rod sparks and i have started fires from throwing ferro rod sparks onto something like birch bark and starting a fire with it so it can definitely do that as well so that is another nice feature of this knife well uh, my experience with this knife has been really good i've really enjoyed it i think the buck thug and the buck punk and the buck hoodlum while horrible horrible names for knives would have never chose that to name my knives i think it's kind of stupid especially the thug but um you know while they may have stupid names i actually really well they may have stupid names i actually really love these knives especially the thug i think the thug is the perfect in-betweener between the punk and the hoodlum and i think it has the maximum amount of usability as far as a multi-tool i think as far as a one tool option this knife actually does a very admirable job at what it's designed and what it was intended to do and i think there are a lot of gimmicky one tool options out there put out by people who have some you know outdoor time but really ron hood this knife was made toward the end of his life and he had a lot Lot, a lot of outdoor survival experience to put into a knife like this and it really shows when you use it 
So overall, I really enjoyed it. And this is actually one of the few big knives I'm actually not going to get rid of because I really, really love the way it works. And there are real applications like when I want to go super minimalistic and only carry one tool in, like do a real one tool option and carry this and maybe like a handful of things like a water bottle and you know, just a handful of things. This is what I would really carry because I know it's capable. I know what it can do and what it can do, it does really well. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this review on the often overlooked but still really amazing Buck Thug. And uh, I would highly encourage you guys to go check these things out because I don't think Buck makes them anymore. But if you can pick one up, definitely do it because they are really solid and really capable knife. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. And I'm out.